we are going to take a topic from philosophy of science and discuss about Karl Popper. A brief introduction. Karl Popper was born and brought up in Vienna. He gave his theories on logical positivism and was influenced by Marxism. He was interested in physics and was influenced by Einstein's theory of relativity and Newton's physics laws. He did not see science as solid, stable or eternally valid. Okay, So the preconceived notion of science as solid, stable, he did not see it as that. He rejected it and he presented his own view and he argued that it is a set of conjectures which are subject to falsification and refutation. So we are more concerned about falsification, what he said about that. From the sociological perspective, we are more interested in that. He said that the creation of the scientific status of a theory is its falsifiability or refutability or testability. So according to him, whenever a scientific theory is produced, if it cannot be refuted, then it is not scientific. Okay, so that means whenever a theory is presented, it has to be falsified or refuted. So with this thought, he gave a new meaning to science because he wanted to free science from the very uh, cliched positivistic certainties because Science, according to him, is relative because we can compare it. That is what he is talking about theories, that we should be able to test them. If they are right or wrong, we should just not accept them as absolute truths. He said that science is like myth-making. And it is not because of the arrogance that, okay, we have tested something and it has to be right. No, it is not because of this attitude that science uh, flourishes, but it, it is because of the possibility, the scope that is there for falsifiability and refutability. He was of the view that it is only through this culture of critical rationalism. That means you have to analyze, critically analyze the theories to make science progress because if we just accept something and do not check for any uh, errors or any falsifiability then that science is not going to flourish, it is not going to succeed ahead. Therefore, trial and error, conjectures, refutations are very important for the development of science. He gave emphasis to the problem. According to him, the problem always comes first. and he also gave a sophisticated version of hypothesis. He said that the central task of philosophy of science is to solve Kant's problem. So what was Kant's problem? He said that it is very important to demarcate science, that is to identify and mark the difference between science and non-science. So on that note, Popper said that falsifiability is that one element which is the line of demarcation. On the basis of falsifiability, we can differentiate between science and non-science. So, he has put a lot of emphasis on falsifiability. Therefore, it is safe to say that a statement is scientific if and only if it is falsifiable because he has given a direct proportion between scientificness of sci being something scientific and its falsifiability. He gave the hypothetical deductive model of scientific method. Let us not go very deep into it. We will just check what the steps were. So, the first step is that you start with the problem because problem is central for Popper. He has given a lot of emphasis on the problem that is there. Then we suggest a hypothesis as a tentative solution. Okay, So for the time being we present a hypothesis. Now next to make it scientific we will try to falsify it. 
by the method of deduction. Now when we make several efforts, several attempts to falsify the hypothesis and if stands to be correct, if we do not find anything but we did try, so we will consider it to be alright, we will consider it to be okay, then we can move ahead. The problem has been solved. Now the next concept given by him, uh, him was verisimilitude. The meaning of this term is truth likeness or truth nearness. That means it is not the absolute truth but it is somewhat close to the truth. It is somewhere close to it. So he said that science cannot present the truth. That means science does not give absolute truth. But when there are various scientific theories, they can, you know, over a period of time when there are a lot of errors and then we falsify it, then we come up with a new theory. And when the process goes on, at some point of time, it can come approximately close to the truth. Therefore, whichever theory is presented, it is not the absolute truth. Scientific observations, he argued that, they cannot be represented to be pure. Pure in this case, that means they are not absolute truths as they are always dependent on the theory. Therefore, theory can change. It can be falsified. So, the observation cannot be considered as pure. So, I hope you got this part. It is not very important for us. We just need to understand the keywords so that we can eliminate the options in the examination. Now let us uh, solve some questions. Question number one. The challenge ahead of scientific community is not to search for confirmations or verifications of the existing theory but to search for refutation. According to the statement, the role of scientific community is to. So this is a statement by Karl Popper and we can understand by reading this that he is saying that the job of the scientific community is not to confirm or verify, but at first it is to refute. That means to falsify the given theory. The theory which is already present, do not verify it. First, falsify it. Check for errors. Check for the points that can be refuted. So, the answer will be option number two. Find falsification. It cannot be option number one because according to him, scientific theories have nothing to do with absolute certainty or absolute truth. And focus on dogmatic thinking, this is also wrong because we understand that when the word is, the keyword refutation has been mentioned, so we need to find falsification. Option two is the correct answer. Moving ahead, question number two. Who said the fact that we can predict eclipses does not therefore provide a valid reason for explicating that we can predict revolutions? So this was a very famous quote by Popper where he's again trying to say that science is not the absolute truth. Just because we predicted eclipses through the study of science, it does not mean that we can predict revolutions because revolutions, the nature of revolutions and the nature of eclipses is very contrasting. It is very different. Revolutions is a social phenomena. Therefore, it cannot be predicted and it does not give any reason. So, he again claims that it is not okay to accept things as it is. Always find errors and try to falsify the existing theory. So the answer is option number two. I hope you got this lecture. Thank you for watching.